hi guys welcome back to another youtube video it's your tutor disha congratulations on passing your csec biology examination and welcome to cape unit one biology trust me it only gets better now we have an entire syllabus to cover let's get to work today I'll be attacking the first objective of your syllabus. Yes, objective one under the topic aspects of biochemistry states that you should know the structure and properties of the water molecule and how these structure and properties relate to its role as the medium of life. What is water, students? Water is an inorganic, transparent, tasteless, pure water is tasteless, odorless, and colorless substance, which is the main constituent of Earth's hydrosphere. Remember, what's the hydrosphere from CSEC biology? That's right. The hydrosphere is the liquid part of the Earth, like the rivers, the streams, the oceans, and the lakes. Now, water's molecular formula is H2O. Now, before we get into the properties, let's talk a little bit more about the chemistry of the water molecule. This will deepen our understanding of how this simple molecule is the solvent of life. The oxygen is bonded to these hydrogens through something that we call covalent bonding. And covalent bonding is just the sharing of electrons, in this case, between oxygen and hydrogen. Why this water molecule appears to be bent? Why couldn't it be linear? It's because of the chemistry of the oxygen. So this oxygen atom has six valence electrons, two of which it's going to share with each hydrogen atom through what again? Covalent bonding. Very good. That leaves us with four or two pairs of unshared electrons. These two pairs of unshared electrons are going to repel each other. And that's the reason for the bent nature of the water molecule. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Starts with P. Hmm. Polar. Good job. Oxygen is a more electronegative element. When we say an element is electronegative, we mean that it's electron loving. It loves to keep or retrieve electrons to itself. So at the oxygen end, it's going to have a slightly negative charge. These ends are going to be partially positive. Hence, water is a polar molecule. Since the water molecule is polar, it will be attracted to other polar substances like salts, glucose, or even water itself. Now we're ready to talk about the properties of water and match them to their functions. Firstly, water is an excellent solvent because it's polar. Due to its polarity, it can dissolve numerous substances. However, water can only dissolve other polar substances. And this is important because substances that are important to our survival can be suspended in water and be transported to our organs and tissues. They can even diffuse across our cells, facilitated by water, of course. In plants, water is an excellent solvent because minerals dissolved in water are absorbed into the plant and transported to the different areas via the xylem. Secondly, water has amazing cohesion and adhesion properties. 
Cohesion occurs when water is attracted to other water molecules. A molecule of water can be attracted to another molecule of water. This attraction is called hydrogen bonding. And hydrogen bonds hold water molecules together. The attraction of the water molecules via hydrogen bonding is important for a process that we call surface tension. Now adhesion, on the other hand, occurs when water is attracted to other substances. For example, in plants, the molecules of water are able to adhere to the walls of the xylem as they travel upward to the stems and the leaves where they are needed. Another important property of water is its specific heat capacity. Due to strong intermolecular bonds, water can tolerate large amounts of heat energy. Because water can tolerate large amounts of heat, that helps us to maintain a constant body temperature. And that is important for our cell's metabolism. Now, outside of the cellular level, water is important in the atmosphere. The temperature of water changes very slow. That helps the terrestrial and aquatic plants to survive in their ecosystems. Another important property of water is its high heat of vaporization. To change water into gas, it takes a lot of energy due to the hydrogen bonds between each water molecule. Lastly, density. Water expands when it freezes, and here now it's called ice. Ice is less dense than water and will therefore float on top of it. Here I have water in two different states, liquid and solid. And ice is less dense than liquid. Because of its density, ice floats on water. Let's see. What's happening? It's floating. Now, this is an important property of water. If we should think about this in an aquatic ecosystem, with the formation of ice at the top of these water bodies heat will be released below and that will prevent the full freezing of these water bodies allowing aquatic plants and animals to survive these harsh conditions thanks for watching and stay tuned for a little quiz on this tutorial